We bombard minds, hearts, souls, and spirits with words. Universe, hunt for my brothers and find them. Sit them down and school them on how much I miss them. Remind them that they're the only living connection to our father. I was a six-string bass guitar, made of metallic brown, satin textures. He would tune me in the right clothes and he knew with this guitar. You never go wrong unless. My name is Linda Gabriel. A lot of people know me as Poetic Angel. I'm a spoken word artist, so I do poetry and storytelling. I started off in high school when some of my teachers realized that what I was writing then was poetry. But I also got a lot of inspiration from watching Mai Chisamba. She used to have, um, I don't remember the name of the program, but it would appear on Saturday mornings and they would interview writers and poets. And they used to be uh, Oscar Guiriri, then known as Ngoma of Shima. So those are some of the, like my first inspirations that I remember about my coming into the poetry world. She made way across from the market, going to the Shabin, where she ordered a very sweating black label coat. On its arrival, the waiter was amazed how this young woman kissed the bottle. She ordered a second one just after five minutes. An old man seated in one of the corners looked at this young woman, who at this point of the day was expected to be home doing her house chores, but she was here in this Shabin gulping huge mouthfuls of beer, gulping huge mouthfuls of beer. On finishing a second beer, she tipped the waiter, turned and smiled at this old man, told him to look out for tomorrow's headlines. It would be in the head of the Sunday Times or the Sunday Nation. She walked out. 99.9% .9 of my work I write myself. Except sometimes when I'm doing a collaboration, then the other artist brings in their work and we, we co-write. Everyday life inspires me. For instance, if I see a woman with a blue eye, blue or black eye, you know, I want to write about that. If I see a kid walking to school without shoes, that stuff that inspires me. So you realize a lot of my work, I talk a lot on women because I was raised by women. There's, that's a lot of people who are surrounding me, uh, women and single mothers. I heard them sing praises. They parroted on how humble she was, prattled on a gentleness, soft heart and pure mind. They clapped their hands, shook their large bottoms, dancing to the songs honoring the days of her life. But they were all plastic. No one mentioned on how grudgingly she would feed her husband's children, how on many nights she sent them to bed on grumbling beddies, ditching them on wet bedding. We wouldn't be a few of us in the industry if there were no challenges. So you realize you, you are a young woman and you come from a community where poetry is more like a hobby, something that you just do at school. You don't venture into it full time. And a lot of times the spaces that uh, these poetry shows happen, our parents are not familiar with them. So for instance, if at the book cafe, the first thing that comes into my mom's mind is book cafe, it's a bar. Being a woman on its own is a huge challenge. So sometimes you find, like the time I really got onto the scene when we were doing House of Hunger, Poetry Slam, you you would be maybe two or three sisters there against 20 young men doing poetry. So that on its own as well, you realize it's, it's a challenge. Then the other challenge is publishing itself. You might not get published as a poet because there is no money making in the industry for publishing a poetry anthology. Drowning my sorrows away into the ocean, I watched them hold hands with the waves, two by two they earned on to the dance floor. For a moment, it strictly come dancing. Mind of mine swept away in a samba. My eyes glued to their breathtaking dances as they do the cha-cha. For a moment, I'm lured to be in the moment as my sorrows make attempts to get back into me. Poetry has been good. I'm very grateful. Poetry has opened doors for me.